very good morning to all my colleagues, faculty members, students. I'm extremely delighted uh, to be with you today online. Many, many thanks to my dearest friend, Fernando, for inviting me for this uh, interactive session with the students. Yes, students, I'm going to talk to you today about nanotechnology, the promise of the future. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take you the field of nanotechnology, where a lot of innovations and a lot of breakthroughs are being And you can see in this uh, first slide, you can see gold nanoparticles. Gold nanoparticles are fascinating materials for a large number of people. Particularly for uh, look at silver nanoparticles, the AFM picture of silver nanoparticles. Silver nanoparticles are also very important for biomolecules, particularly for animals. So nanoparticles play a very important role. Before going to the uh, nano material, I'm going to take you to India. I'm going to take you all to Mahatma Gandhi University. Mahatma Gandhi University was started in 1980. Operating the color of education. Dear students, our university was the first to start a university institute commemorating the contribution of this father. Mahatma Gandhi is a champion of uh, equity and in higher education and empowerment of the underprivileged. And I wanted to show you where I am from. I am from India, the southernmost part of uh, India to Kerala. Fernando was with us several times. I was uh, in your institute a few years ago. And Fernando and I have a very active cooperation uh, and we have lots of ideas for the future. And I welcome some of your students to come to my laboratory and do a great research. This is the entrance of the Mahatma Gandhi University campus. And uh, we are the best in the state of Kerala because we got the Chances Award, we have an air of ranking. This is the official website of the university. You can see I am receiving the Best University Award from the Nobel Chancellor. And then, uh, let me show you some facts about university. We have 400,000 students. Because under the university, we have a large number of colleges. Uh, we under colleges. We have main campus, 1,500 students. And many, many satellite campuses. 300 colleges. Look at our ranking, Times ranking, we are between 400 and 500, NAR NAR of National Institution Ranking Framework, number three, our innovation. Some nice pictures of the campus. So you are all most welcome to your campus. The green campus, the green coverage is more than 50%. You can see the eco-friendly campus, the aerial view of our campus. Dear friends, students, we have a large number of international clients. We cooperate with all the companies. In South America, our main partner is Brazil. In North America, uh, in Europe, we have cooperation in China, Russia, Kazakhstan, New Zealand, Australia. We have cooperation with almost all the companies. We have a fantastic library. When you come to our campus, you can and show you our fantastic library. We have achieved several lower, several awards. I told you this is one of the best universities in the state of Kerala and national. University has several uniqueness. Thanks to DST. We have a business innovation foundation. We have a company in the campus. We have lots and lots of uniqueness. Uh, this is School of Chemical Sciences where I started my career. In School of Chemical Sciences, you have polymer group, organic group, inorganic group, physical group, nano group. You can see this is chemistry where Fernando visited several times. 
Our university is well equipped with good instrumental facilities. We have a very active nano center. The Nanda Kumar and I look after this nano center. We get a lot of funding from the government of India, government of Kerala, industrial funding. So we mobilize lots of funding. We have lots of innovative program, innovative achievement. Unity Laboratory with Canada, provide lectures, care on hybrid materials, there's lots of activities. This is a right scholar business program. We invited lots of people from different parts of the world to the campus. The right campus is the right program. We also have a normal lecture series. And I want to ask with us three, four times as a right professor. We have a very active school of energy materials where we named the program. We have several postdoctoral fellows in the school of energy. We are running a large number of projects in the school of energy materials. See our international partners. We work with several companies, Yukon US, General Cable, CHIs. We have many exchange programs with with Fernando, we are very happy to start a cooperation. Our laboratories, our campus is well equipped. My resolution electron microscope, real emission electron microscope, the big post microscope, x ray. But we have all the facilities in the campus. You see this. So, dear friends, with this background, I'm going to start my lecture. Nanotechnology is a focus. Initially, my idea was to take. <clears throat> All my students are to the campus. I I invite uh, <clears throat> my first slide is what is nanotechnology? What does nanotechnology mean? I wanted to show you a beautiful slide which all of you know. This is a lotus leaf. On the surface lotus leaf, you can see water droplets, and water cannot form a film. The surface. You know why? Because of repulsive interaction. This leaf surface is highly hydrophobic. Highly hydro hydrophobic because the leaf surface has lots of uh, hydrophobic hydrocarbon particles. Water is hydrophilic, it's a polar material. Therefore, because it because of repulsive interaction, they form a sort of droplet on the surface of the leaf. And People try to understand this this phenomenon. You can see this is uh, this is the the surface of the leaf. The surface of the leaf has lots of white crystals. These are the white crystals. They're like structures. These white crystals are made of hydrocarbon. You know the white and the water cannot form a drop, uh, cannot form a film because of these white crystals. And what really happens when water falls on the lotus leaf, water forms a droplet, and then it escapes from the water. The water droplets roll and roll and roll and get away from the leaf. While rolling, you know what happened? They take away all this dirt, debris. So the leaf surface is always clean. You see how nature has engineered the leaf surface. So this is what is known as lotus effect. The lotus effect is basically associated with the uh, waxy crystals, I mean 20 nanometer waxy crystals, and also the nanoscale roughness. That makes the surface highly hydrophobic. Looking at this phenomena, you know what man has made? Man has made hydrophobic glasses, the windscreen of automotive cars. Now we have invisible wiper. Cars without wipers, you see, when water falls on this, water falls on this windscreen, water cannot form a film. Other forms of droplet, like a lotus. And this water escapes from the surface of the of the wind, windscreen. And the windscreen is always kept clean because these water droplets. Take away all the debris, take away all the dirt. And you see how man has learned something with nature, and how man has implemented something 
useful for the humanity. Wiperless glass. My next example to show you is the Geiko. You all must have seen Geiko. Geiko farm, if you examine under different landscape, this meso lens, this is a macro landscape, the meso landscape, the micro landscape, and this is narrow. If you examine the 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 farm of the Geiko, you see millions of nanotubes here. They're all now. And these millions of nanotubes help the gecko to be stuck on the, the surface. Gecko can run very fast. It doesn't fall. And this is very curious for man how this happens. So they looked at the gecko's palm under high resolution electron microscope and they found millions of nanotubes. And they made something very similar. See, this is the scanning electron microscope image of Geiko sticky tape. They made something very similar using polypropylene. Look at this. And you see the Spider-Man, Geiko tape for the Spider-Man. Spider-Man can run very fast on the roof. You see this Geiko tape. And you can see this is the, the top one is the, the uh, Geiko palm, and this is what man has made using polypropylene. The Geiko tape is quite interesting. Now I'm going to show you one is nano. So I have shown two examples. One is the one is the Geiko. And man has learned something from Geiko palm and he made, came out with a Geiko type adhesive. And now I'm going to talk to you about what is nanotechnology. A good example of uh, nanotech. Space elevators. Ultra high strength materials allow. Tower to be built in space. So space elevators could be made using nanotechnology. Tiny machines could be utilized for curing cancer. This is called targeted therapies, cancer therapies. Injectable nanobots. The nanobots can go into the body and do all the functions. Injectable nanobots for for uh, for treating your uh, dental problems. So they're all actually going to revolutionize the medical field. Nanotechnology can make the computers much faster, supercomputers in nanotechnology. Now, here, students, I'm going to tell you about the history of nanotechnology. I'm asking a question how long have nanoparticles been used? Months, years, or centuries? The answer is. Nanotechnology has been utilized. There are both examples. Pottery using nano sized particles. Tali is used by the priest, Roman priest. Tali is actually glitters when white light falls. These are all fine examples of nanotechnology being used in the 8th, 9th, 10th century. I'm going to quote Bible. You see, uh, probably you all know that if you read the Bible, Exodus, where Moses tried to save the Israelis from the atrocities of Pharaoh, the king. Moses asked all the Israelis to follow him. It was a long journey. And there was no food, there was no not enough water. So people became very angry with Moses. A long journey. You know what people did? They turned away from God and they made a golden calf and started worshiping the golden calf. They turned away from God. By seeing this, Moses became very angry. You know what Moses did? Moses took the golden calf. And then he made a fire. Then he burned the golden calf in the fire. And then he took it and dispersed water. And asked all the Israelis who turned away from God to drink this. You know, after drinking this, after drinking this uh, gold water, they all drink. Probably you, you all know that gold has a, now people know that gold has a very important blessing or not. 
So I'm posing a question to all my students. Is Moses the father of nanotechnology? See what Moses did. Moses did was something very brilliant. Thing. He took the golden calf, burned it in fire, and dispersed in water, and asked all his ideas. After ringing this, all his ideas became okay. They turned to his God. Dear students, when you go to Europe, I'm sure uh, my good friend uh, Fernando has traveled a lot. When you go to Europe, when you go to some of the old churches, cathedral churches, you see beautiful glittering windows. windows, And these windows are made of uh, glass filled with nanoparticles of gold and silver. That is why you have beautiful colors. When white light falls on it, you get the right of different colors. Because these, these uh, window glasses contain nanoparticles, gold nanoparticles of varying sizes, so they can give rise to uh, different colors. I'm going to show you another interesting example for nanotechnology. Uh, probably students who are very good in history. You must have uh, read that uh, in 5th, 6th, 8th, 7th, 8th, 9th centuries, the Muslim kings, Islamic kings used to win all the war. It was a puzzle for the people how these Islamic kings are able to defeat enemies. You know what the scientists did? Scientists examined the swords and uh, knife used by the, by the, by the Muslim kings. You know, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine centuries, they were all fight with the sword uh, using using a um, force. You can see this is a battlefield. You know what the scientists found when they examined this under electron microscope? I can show you. You see, they found cementite type nanowires on the edge of the knife. That gave sharpness to the knife. So they could kill all these people. You know how they made the made the uh, made the uh, sword and knife. The is the uh, the Islamic kings used to buy iron from India, and India had India had that time very special technology for making a very good sword and knife. We had a special heat treatment. When you subject iron at very high temperature, you can have this sort of carbon fibers. And these carbon fibers, these sort of nanotubes, and these sort of fibers gave rise to enormous strength, enormous sharpness. And that's why the kings could, the Islamic kings could defeat their enemies. And this is called Damascus steel. You see the type of uh, Damascus design, the cementitic bands. And you can, I, I request all my students to read the Nature paper. Nature, volume 444 paper. It's a free download. You all must read this Nature paper. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you the the uh, the chalice being used by the priest. Particularly in the in the Roman Church, the chalice. When you when you look at the chalice, you can see the chalice. Glitters when white light falls. You can see, I request the students to look at the color change. You know, when illuminated from outside, it appears green. Now it is green. However, when illuminated from within the cup, it glows red. Now it is red. It changes green and red. How? Why this happens? Because these tallies have been made with nanoparticles of gold and silver of varying sizes. 150, 100, 80, 60, 40, 30, 10. That is why you get this fantastic color. And, and later, people could make nanoparticles uh, in the laboratory. You see, when you make nanoparticles of gold of varying sizes, you see you have different colors. Now we understood the physics, we know the chemistry. Why these nanoparticles show different colors? Now let me show you the, the, the people who contributed to nanoscience and nanotechnology. I will start with the, the contribution of Michael Faraday. You can see Michael Faraday showing the colloidal, uh, colloidal 
gold particles to the Royal Society people. This is a philosophical transaction of the Royal Society, 1857. And he could produce, uh, he could produce uh, gold nanoparticles. Another important uh, scientist who contributed extensively to nanotechnology is Langmuir. For the Nobel Prize, ACS has a very important journal in his name, Langmuir. Langmuir established the existence of monolayers. These monolayers have to cool two dimensional qualities and later development of totally transparent glass produced by forming compound and something. People not advising them. Albert Einstein provided a thoroughly uh, quantitative theory for the state of colloidal dispersion, uh, the downward motion. And now, dear colleagues, friends, students, you never forget the name of Richard Feynman. He's the father of nanotechnology. And his groundbreaking talk. There is plenty of room at the bottom. And all of you should read his paper. If you look at the, if you look at the, uh, you can see his, his talk in, uh, in, at the American Physical Society. He got Nobel Prize in Mathematics. His groundbreaking speech, all the students should read. There is plenty of room at the bottom. What he meant? He said that plenty of room at the bottom means you can, Assemble atoms and molecules together. You can make a series of hierarchical nanoscale structures. So, which is very many species to be the power of nanoscience and nanotechnology. Dear students, the term nanotechnology was first used by a Japanese scientist, Norio Kanikuchi, in 1974. And he used the term nanotechnology to refer to production technology to get extra high accuracy. That is why we need this. So now this word became very famous. Thanks to, thanks to uh, uh, Norio Kennedy. There is another important invention in nanotechnology by Gerd Binney, Heinrich O. They invented the first scanning tunneling microscope. So using that scanning tunneling microscope, you can play with atoms. You can see atoms. You can pick up atoms. You can see uh, what um, what the gentleman has done. Don Eagle. Don Eagle has picked up standard atoms in 1989 using a cantilever of um, standard colouring microscope. He put. He wrote the name of his company. You see, using a scanning colouring microscope, using a course microscope, you can play with atoms. You can pick up atoms. Another important discovery in nanotechnology is the discovery of fullerenes, buckyballs, by uh, Smalley, Robert Kerr, and Karo, the invention of uh, buckyballs. Carbon nanotubes were invented by Jima, still waiting for the Nobel Prize. The Nobel Prize was not given for nanotubes. That was uh, his classical paper at the carbon nanotubes. You can see again our prize in physics in 2010 for the discovery of graphene, invention of graphene. Andre Gein, Konstantinovus Love Kornovich, invention of graphene uh, in 2010. Then Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2016 awarded to Jean Pierre Savage. Savage, Sir J. Fraser Chodar, and Faringa uh, on nano machines. So, three of them shared the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 2016. Then, now in 1993, uh, people could synthesize quantum ball. The first high quality quantum balls were synthesized by Murray Norris in Babandi, a classical theater in Germany. American Chamber Society. You all must read this paper. Quantum dots are very small particles with interesting optical properties. They have some normal white light, and depending on their size, they change of brightness. 
Recently, I was in Lanzhou University. Lanzhou University in China, they are very active in quantum dot nanostructures for illumination applications. Nanotransistor in 1997, Lucid Technologies fabricated nanotransistor, a complete metal oxide semiconductor transistor. DNA motor in 2000, dual prototype, nanoparticle embedded clothing material in 2002. Now, different types of nanostructures can be caught on your clothes. You can make smart clothing material. The clothing material could be utilized, could be utilized in laboratories. Clothing material being utilized in warfare. So, uh, nanoparticle embedded smart clothing material has become very important in recent years. And some universities have uh, a smart textile department, smart clothing, where you can put different types of nanostructures. Nanoscale solar cells becoming a very important part. Right now, the silicon solar cells are quite really heavy, but nowadays, uh, people are working very hard to make flexible solar cells. You can fold them and put in your pockets. Uh, these are all uh, plastic films working with quantum balls. I'm sure in the coming years, you will have beautiful, flexible nano solar cell with a very high efficiency. There are a lot of nano engineer products are coming out. Now, let me tell you what is nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is the ability to work at the multi level, step by atom, or what? To create large structures. They're fundamentally a new multi organism. You can play with the size, you can play with the distribution, you can play with the structure, and you can work with another products. Completely different from the world. You can see the beautiful picture of nanomaterial. Key atoms, tens of nanometer size, the size of a DNA, width of a DNA molecule is two nanometer, red blood cell, two to five micrometer. By ash, the small particles that you get in the atmosphere is around 10 to 20 micrometers. So it just gives you some idea about that. And you can see these are all uh, nanoparticles of carbon sulfide, carbon sulfide, gold, buckyball, dendrimase, carbon nanotube, graphene, and all different types of nanomaterials. And nanotechnology does not include just a single industry or industry. Tennis for sports, for palaces, for chemical industry, for medicine, biotechnology, information technology, so nanotechnology, that's just all branches of technology. Again, I have a beautiful picture to give you some understanding. The size of atoms, 0 0.1, 0 0.5 nanometer. The width of a DNA molecule is 1 to 2 nanometer. Protein is 10 nanometer size. Viruses, 100 nanometer size. Bacteria, they are quite big. Bacteria, micrometer size. One micrometer, one micrometer. Now, nanotechnology potential impact. In 15, 20 years, nanotechnology is going to have a dramatic impact. Materials and material processing, $340 billion. Device information technology, $300 billion. Biotechnology and pharmaceutical, $180 billion. Chemical manufacturing catalysis, $100 billion. Aerospace, $70 billion. Sustainability in water, energy, $45 billion. Healthcare, diagnostic, processes, $30 billion. Tools, automation, life cycle cost, $20 billion. Display screens, nano silver seal refrigerator, tennis rackets, these are all some of the nano care fabric, nano lotions, nano sunscreen lotions. They're all actually magnetic storage devices using nanotechnology. Nanomaterials for UV protection. Sunscreen lotions. They're all 
based on nanotech. Gold nanoparticles are used in Japan to make uh, to 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 make bathrooms smell better in Japan. And the materials for catalysis, biomarkers. You can see this is. Uh, uh, you might be knowing that nanomaterials are being used quite a lot for cancer diseases. You're not suffering from cancer here. And then you have a injection of nanoparticles into this body. And all these nanoparticles injected into the bloodstream goes to this cancer cell. Okay. You apply magnetic field, all these nanoparticles come to this part of the cancer. Then you expose the, the region with a laser. And when you expose the laser, these nanoparticles vibrate and heat is generated and the cancer cell is destroyed. And nothing happens to the surrounding cell. So all the cancer cells could be, could be destroyed without healthy tissue. This is actually a slide which shows the, the business opportunities for thermoplasts and thermocell materials. I wanted to show you uh, the automotive sector. Tensile strengths, you see, Toyota was the first to utilize nanotechnology for automotive. You know what they did? They filled the nylon with nylon and nanoclay together. And they made heat resistant timing belts. And you can see the properties are much better. Okay. Property enhancement. This is followed by General Motors company in the US. They made TPU and clay. And they made the exceeded trim of Chevrolet in Balaka. Yeah. silver uniformly dispersed in polar or non-polar solvents with a high solid content is very good for printing. Silk screen printing, flexography, microconduct printing, etc. So nano silver is being used for printing. Better, faster, better, cheaper. Science, space transportation. So space nanotechnology is going to be used. You can see the the NASA nanotechnology roadmap. NASA is using quite a lot of uh, nanotechnology: NEMS, light systems, biological computing, biomimetic material system, smart skin materials, nanomechanical devices. So uh, NASA is using nanotechnology in big way. There are technologies for weapons, easy to build, hard to monitor, easy to deliver. So nano weapons are also getting more of money. Surface coating, nanotechnology is being used quite a lot for surface, surface coating. Super tough, transparent nano composites for scratch proof coating. See, when you use a nanoscale coating, the product, the do not undergo any crisis. They are resistant to crack. They are resistant to flame. They are resistant to barrier against the moisture and oxygen. So nanoscale coating is gaining a lot of momentum, a lot of advantages. Nanoscale coating material. Flame retardant materials. You can see this is polypropylene with nano nano fillers. No, it does not burn. This is halogenated polypropylene. This is neat polypropylene. Burns very easily. This is vinyl, polyvinyl chloride. You see, polypropylene with nanoparticles can resist, uh, resist flame, doesn't burn. So it's, it's, it's going to be very important for uh, cable applications. Medical plastics, you can see these, all these medical plastics. Medical plastics are being used for, for the lot in biomedical applications. And all these medical plastics, you can see, they're all coated with nanomaterials. Once you coat a nanomaterial, what advantage? You become resistant to scratch, high bending stiffness, pull and push strength, buckling, buckling resistance, and beautiful surface. Because surface, smooth surface is very important for a large number of uh, uh, applications where you use Nanomaterial for implants. Sports, we can see this is a tennis ball. 
If you cut open a tennis ball, what you see is a butyl rubber filled with nanotech. That is why you get a very high rebouncing action for tennis balls. The tennis ball is a fantastic example for uh, rubber, butyl rubber filled with nanotech. Tire engineering nanotechnology is being produced a lot. In the liners, tire thread, and the tires become more fuel efficient. The, autom the, the, the vehicles become more fuel efficient. The tire becomes more lighter and durable using nanotechnology. Chemical protection with improved dexterity and flexibility, improved mask, improved gloves, they're all very important using nanotechnology. TAO2 coated materials. TAO2 is getting a lot of momentum worldwide. TAO2 coated building materials. TAO2 has a very strong uh, antimicrobial action, self training action. You can see the tiles coated with the TAO2. They're all very clean. But look at tiles which are not coated. See, they're all, these are all AARO coated with the TAO2. This, this one and this one are not TAO2. So, TAO2 coated tiles because of photocatalytic action, they're always self cleaning action. TAO2 coated glasses, you can see this part of the glass is TAO2 coated. And glass become never hazy when you coat with titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide glasses are uh, quite beautiful. You can see this is, uh, I showed you in the beginning, this kind of white. Now you have automotive cars without white. KO to quarter tiles are being used extensively in hospitals to make the hospital ecosystem more resistant to bacteria and viruses. Automotive, automotive sector, particularly for buses, they they utilize uh, they utilize uh, tiny amount of uh, envirox. These are nothing but cerium oxide nanoparticles to help the fuel to burn better. So it could be attached to a source so that the S host will be purified. Automotive applications, nanotechnology is being used for a lot of automotive. Cars become more lighter, cars become more fuel efficient. <laughs> cars become more durable. Nanotechnology has to be utilized for sustainability, global climate change, depletion of natural resources, scarcity of resources. So all these issues, uh, nanotechnology could be utilized for a lot of purification, air purification, soil purification. Dear students, colleagues, I wanted to show you some of the downsize effects that could be helpful to society, to, the, to, the, to the humanity, because of the small size. The point I want to tell you is because of the smaller size, many nanoparticles are toxic. So we all have to be very, very careful about nanotechnology offers a lot of possibilities, but you we all have to be very, very careful about the downside effects, particularly small size. But smaller the size, the surface of nanoparticles. So there could be toxicity. So bioaccumulation in food chain, that's a real problem. Life cycle impact. So these all have to be studied very carefully. So we have to study the risk in workplace. So my my advice to all the students work on nanotechnology. When you deal with the nanostructures, nanoparticles, you have to take all the precautions. Nanomaterials present new challenges, understanding, validity, and managing. What is the risk as a function of exposure? What is the risk? of the nanoscale uh, materials, how often you are exposed, how long you are exposed, how you are exposed, is a repetitive isolator. So my request to all my students and colleagues, you have to utilize, you have to follow standard protocols, you have to take all the safety measures when you deal with. So we do not know the long-term effect of nanoparticles on human health.
So nanotechnology should be utilized. We must uh, utilize this to clean up our environment. We must utilize nanotechnology to, to solve our environmental problem. We must use nanotechnology to prevent future environmental impacts. And we must use nanotechnology for uh, building a sustainable planet, a planet which is going to be the place for our uh, generation. So we have to have more of sustainable technology. So my last slide is nanotechnology is a very powerful new approach that will change our industries and land. Nanotechnology is going to revolutionize our lives. But the point is, a very small window right now to bring up this technology responsibly and sustainably. To learn from the past mistakes. And currently look at the possibility of harmful implications. So my message to all my students, colleagues, nanotechnology is a great opportunity. We cannot neglect it. That's why I made a statement. It's an, it's a, it's an opportunity to import media. So my message to all my students, you have to allow nanotechnology to grow sustainably. Nanotechnology has to be utilized for sustainability, sustainable growth of our, our planet. I have a very symbolic slide here, you see. We have now more than 6 billion people in the mother earth, maybe close to 6.5 or 7 billion people. And these 6 billion people or 6.5 billion people, the diameter of the earth is 8,000 mile diameter. 6 billion people. Look at the right hand side, you can make 10 million components, electronic components, nanoscale components in 8 inch diameter. This is the beauty of nano material. The world is moving the thinner and lighter. So 10 million components could be put in 8 inch diameter space. 10 million nanoscale components. Those who work on nanotechnology should publish your papers in nanostatics and nanotechnology. Welcome my colleagues, friends, PhD students, Summit. I'm the editor of this young. This is my group, chemistry. And you can see my PhD students and Hannah is actually uh, giving me a lot of support to record my talk and many, many thanks to Dr. Hannah. All my colleagues, students, you can see Eve Brohan's visiting us. This is our group. We have uh, two conferences coming up. International Conference on Macromolecules. That is January 12, 13, and 14. International Conference on Nanostructure Materials. I think uh, my colleague Fernando is coming for the second conference. These are my citations. Books. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.